IB Nation, welcome back to another edition of the Irish Breakdown Podcast. It is Tuesday, September 10th, and we got a lot to talk about, everybody. That's Trevor Trowbridge, my dude, and we are going to talk about a lot of things, Trevor. Normally, Tuesday is intro the opponent day, but, you know, we're going to take out a page a page out of Notre Dame's flawed fit, uh, game plan from last week, and we're just going to not practice like we normally <laughs> practice. Fortunately for us, it won't have any outcome on this weekend's game, but we're going to talk about Notre Dame and Purdue from the standpoint of a few different aspects of the game. So we're not going to just kind of rehash Northern Illinois. We're, we're, we're past Northern Illinois. It's time to talk about what's next for Notre Dame. And instead of diving into Purdue, because honestly, I'm sure a lot of you don't really care Um uh, uh, you know, uh, you care, but you, there's a lot more important than just necessarily Purdue specifically. Here's what they do offensively, defensively. I'll dive into that stuff tomorrow, but we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk today about what this means for Notre Dame, and here's what we're not gonna do, and we're not gonna do it in the chat either. We're gonna we're gonna have some constructive football conversations. We're not gonna have the fire this guy bench that guy, childish pot shots at players. We're going to be grownups in this chat, and we're going to be grownups in this show, and we're going to talk about real aspects of what this game means, Trevor. We're going to talk about what's at stake for Notre Dame against Purdue. What does this game mean for Notre Dame against Purdue? And what does it, you know, what's at stake for Notre Dame? And there's a lot more at stake than people think, at least in one direction, in my opinion. And maybe actually people do know that, and we're just we just haven't got a chance to talk about it yet because we're so pissed off about what happened Saturday. Then we're going to talk about quarterback, and we're going to talk about what Notre Dame needs to do to find answers of quarterback. And what again, what we're not going to do, and I'm already knocking people out of the chat. We're not going to just come in here and say this guy sucks, that guy sucks. Bench it. That's not what we're doing. We're going to have actual football conversations. If you want just flame throwing, then go somewhere else. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna actually be grown ups today. But that doesn't mean that we have to say everything is rainbow and sunshine. So there's a difference between saying it's okay, guys, put your put your everything is happy caps on, and you know he, we're all ready to rock and roll. And so that that's not what we're doing. But we're also not going to be those. The, the we're not going to do that stuff. Okay, we're going to talk about okay. They got to find answers to quarterback because what we've seen the first two games of quarterback outside of a couple series here and there against Texas A&M is just not good enough. So we're going to figure out what they need to do there. We're going to talk about there's really three options that Notre Dame has. And we'll, we'll break down each one. And then we'll wrap things up with a look at what do we want to see from Notre Dame this weekend, Purdue, that tells us they've they've at least taken a step in the right direction. That'll be at the end of the show. So that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm looking forward to it. I'm Trevor's looking forward to it. I think you and I probably talked about this for like an hour last night. And then, uh, you know, obviously a little bit before the show. So we're we're going to get into we're going to get into it today, Trevor, be, with uh, with this breakdown of what's to what to expect from Notre Dame Purdue, what's at stake for Notre Dame Purdue, and then we will talk quarterback. Love it! Excited to get into it. There's a lot to unpack after really what's happened the last 72 hours, call it. So pumped to be a part of it today and and dive into what we need to see and, and where the team goes from here. So let's begin with a discussion about what's at stake this weekend for Purdue, because it's a, it's actually an, in my my belief it's an it's a very interesting game, because I don't know that there's a lot that Notre Dame can do this weekend, Trevor, and, and it, to say, hey, look, they righted the ship, everything is good, it's all good, and there's also. There's also aspects of this where you have to say, but there's obviously a lot at stake if they lose. And here's why I say that, because when I look at when I look at the positives, it's OK. So let's say they come out and just rip Purdue up this weekend. Let's say the offense figures it out and they come out and they play like the team we all thought they were. And they go on the road and beat Purdue by 27 points. OK, we've we've seen this before. Right. Like we've been here, done that. We've seen this before. That doesn't mean it's not a good thing if Notre Dame does that. It's a great thing. And we'll talk about why that's a great thing in a little bit. But that doesn't make everyone necessary. It'll, it'll calm things down a bit. But the whole point is the frustration is you do look great so often and then look like that. 
And and I don't know that beating going on the road and beating a Purdue team that's, you know, I think is improved, but coming off a four and eight season and a new head coach in his second year who'd never been a head coach before, you know, l- l- beating that team doesn't necessarily say, all right, you figured it out. You've rectified the problem. No, it, we need to see that they don't continue to have those type of what the heck was that moments. And that's the big thing. But it is at least a step in the right direction, Trevor, from a positive standpoint, from a negative standpoint. You lose this game. I don't know how you recover from that as when if you're Marcus Freeman. So in one instance, it's not necessarily about hey, fix win win big and everything is good or win and everything is good. You know, it's not that. But to the opposite side, is you lose this football game and and you could be going down a path that I'm not sure you can recover from. The way that I look at this game is it is the first step in a multi-step recovery process from what happened on Saturday. If Notre Dame comes out and beats Purdue, like how we think that they should and how we believe that they would have last Saturday, to me that raises even more questions about the level of consistency of this football program. But for me, looking at this game, it's going to be almost about tailoring my expectations. Unfortunately, Stuff doesn't get corrected as quickly as it falls off, and I think that's something a lot of Notre Dame fans are familiar with. The way I look at it is almost like if you're trying to get back in shape. You put on weight or whatever pretty quick. takes a while for it to come back off, and that's kind of how I look at Notre Dame in the rest of this season because as awesome as it would be to come out and watch Riley Leonard have four total touchdowns and Notre Dame handles business and they're getting the young guys in quickly like we thought this three game stretch was going to look like for them. It's more about starting to course correct and and starting to take a step in the right direction of where this program needs to go to finish out the season on a strong note, because to your point, Brian, on the flip side of that coin, I don't want to take extremes here, but you drop this game to Purdue. You are looking at what does the rest of this season mean for the team in South Bend, right? So that is in my mind, what is at stake from a higher level view. And like we've touched on, we'll dive into what that's going to look like and some of the more granular things that we'll be looking for on Saturday. So let's talk about how important it is for Notre Dame to come out and play well, though. Right? Like, here's the thing. What's at stake on Saturday? Beating Purdue does not mean everything is fixed. But I do think after what happened Saturday, Trevor, this team needs a boost in confidence. I think this team needs the 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 to to so like the answers will come down the road about whether or not they've fixed what happened Saturday and then what happened against Louisville last year and Clemson last year and Stanford the year before and Marsh the year before they just didn't answer right like they just didn't show up in those games but it is something that can then be a setup to then be like uh, get them to the point where they do have it fixed. Because again, if you lose this game, it's you don't recover from this. And now we're starting to get into like, okay, you just lost to Northern Illinois and Purdue, and you still got Miami of Ohio, Louisville, uh, uh, an improved Stanford team, Georgia Tech, Florida State, Virginia. I, I mean, like Navy. Ar- everyone can beat you now. And now you get into like, like I've had this, this could this could end up being 2016. And my, my first thought is like, God, God, stop, just, can we just stop? Can we be, can we not over? And then I'm like, but hold on a second. Like, okay. It's that game does not equal 2016, but a loss here does. And because it snowballs, it tells me that this team got broken mentally and emotionally by Northern Illinois bouncing back with a good it doesn't have to be a great performance just a good performance against against Purdue tells me that at least emotionally and mentally and confidence wise this team has bounced back well that's very important for short term looking at it from a micro standpoint it is it is good for them short term to be able to go out and say hey listen like we, we've righted that that sh- ship for this season at least for now, we've bounced back from that. That game didn't snowball into to a loss, sort of like Ohio State led into, I think, Marshall in 2022. I think losing to Ohio State in 2023 led into kind of a couple poor performances against Duke and Louisville. This team has not always handled 
those type of things well. They did bounce back from the loss to Clemson well last year, and they did bounce back from the loss to Louisville last year, which is further evidence of why a big win doesn't mean it's all good because (laughs) they bounced back against USC last year, but then three weeks later went and laid an egg against Clemson. Right. And that's what we're trying to this program needs to get past. And and so when I look at it, it, it it's just you know the, it, you need that first step though. To fix the macro down the road, you do need that first step because that first step is going to tell us where this team is at mentally and emotionally coming out of this loss. Totally. It's about sharing your expectations for what this game actually does mean, right? Much like last week, I do believe that Notre Dame is fully capable of beating Purdue. However, because of the results of last week, now we have to look at every single opponent and say, well, is it as much of a guaranteed win as, as we thought before? And as a team in a in a position like Notre Dame, if I'm Purdue, I smell blood in the water. I'm 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 looking at this. And I'm saying, yo, this is an injured team emotionally coming into our house who is at a pivotal point in their season going into week three, which is not a spot that you want to be in. Marcus Freeman preaches all the time, one play, one life and and challenge everything. And now that is more true than ever. And I think I fall into the category of a lot of people that want to see that go beyond the coaches speak. We need to see it on the field and against Texas A&M, you saw it on the field. You saw Marcus Freeman fire his team up and they were ready. And we talked about it so much in the post game show that your players are a byproduct of how you lead them. And I think there was a reflection of that on, on Saturday. And I don't want to open up that can of worms because we got enough of our, of our beefs out in the post game show. But when we're talking about what's at stake here, that is part of the step one of course correcting where Notre Dame needs to go for the next nine plus games after Purdue, right? And Notre Dame needs to take a hard look at from you know from head coach to coordinators to the captains of the team that were elected by the players and to the role guys and the other starters that this is the standard that we're not living up to. And it's on us to fix it. We have an opportunity at Purdue to take that next step. And if it doesn't, there's going to be some serious conversations after that. But what I think needs to happen is coming in, having a clear, full prep week of practice, and coming in focused. I think that is as big of a step of big of a part of step one as possible is is your focus going into Saturday. So it doesn't take a genius to look at that team that came out there against Northern Illinois and say that they weren't focused and that they weren't bought into what was going on. And that's where it starts for me. The the other thing too, Trevor, is we we still don't know who this team is. Mm -hmm. Because if the team that showed up against North against Texas A&M showed up against Northern Illinois, we're talking about Notre Dame being two and zero and ranked in the top five. And Notre Dame's a much bigger favorite against Purdue because they would have beat Northern Illinois by at least two touchdowns if that team would have shown up. What's ver- what version going to show? Up? This is this is what we've kind of been talking about with Marcus Freeman here and talked about it over the summer, and it, it's it continues to be the, the the concern for him is we don't necessarily know what team is going to show up from week to week. Where's the disconnect? And so that's why I say like if they come out and look great this week, that doesn't answer anything in the big picture. It does answer something for this season because. You had mentioned it. Like, look, th- there, there is a uh, there's a reality in sports where when you're playing a team that's far more dominant than you, you're going to look at it as an opportunity for yourself. But if that team comes out and plays well early, there's a there's a level of a yeah, well, you know, hmm, this ain't our day. This team's too good for us. And no one's going to look at Notre Dame like that now. I don't care. I don't, I don't care if Notre Dame runs off their next seven or eight wins and, and they climb back into the top 10. Virginia's going to be like, oh, Northern Illinois beat them. We can beat them. Army's going to be like, Northern Illinois beat them. We can beat them. They're, they're, no one's going to be afraid of this football team anymore. And, and so it makes it imperative that this team regain some confidence 
and and some swagger back that they completely did not have on Saturday. They, they didn't lose it against Northern Illinois. They never had it against Northern Illinois. And, and that's where Marcus Freeman's got to find some answers as to why, how could I have my team that ready to play A&M? And he starts talking about, uh, you know, th- and this is what's going to be interesting is because he starts talking about, you know, hey, you know, they started watching ESPN. And it's like, isn't isn't that something you've got to be aware of before the game and, and deal with in your preparation before the game? When you know your players are looking at ESPN and how great they are, the last thing you should want to do is change your routine and say, well, we're going to confirm that we're arrived and we're going to, because we're going to not practice on Thursday now because that's what we think about this team. Does anyone on the planet think that Marcus Freeman would have not, would have only done walkthroughs on Thursday if they were playing Louisville last weekend or if they were playing USC last weekend? Of course not. And, and that's the thing is like, how do you reprogram your team now? to say, hey, listen, everybody is a team that we are going to take very seriously and we got to be ready for. And it's not just Marcus Freeman, too. We're going to learn a lot about this football team, Trevor, this weekend about your leadership because your leadership was null and void on Saturday. Even some of the answers I heard from the quote-unquote captains and All-Americans on both sides of the ball on Saturday were like, wow, I now have confirmed that everything I my worst fears were true that you just were not. I think I, I think I heard Howard Cross say something like, you know, around halftime or something like that. They realized they were in a dog fight. Like you didn't know that watching film, you know? And, and so it just tells you the entire process was flawed and it starts is at the top, not just Marcus Freeman, but with your leadership and how you bounce back from this game is going to tell you a lot about your leadership. And, and it, not just with Marcus Freeman. It's going to tell you a lot about your leadership in each side, each room. And it's going to tell you your leadership on both sides of the ball from a player level. How's the locker room? Is this something that tears this team apart? Is there like a lot of finger pointing that comes on now? The offense, defense saying to the offense, like, oh, you guys got to do more. We can't, you know, you know, have to, we can't lose game scoring 16 points is, is the offense going to say hey listen we gave you a fourth quarter lead and you guys gave up you, you do we see that or does this team say hey fellas we all screwed up on saturday we all played a role in this loss and we are going to fix it and those are things that i that you need to see because if they don't do those things then this is just going to kind of they may go out and out talent purdue for a win but it it there's going to be there's going to be some major cracks. And we saw that a little bit from Notre Dame in the past with teams that underachieved is you'd see how you'd see the, that's what they're supposed to be versions of that team from time to time. You know, I mean, Notre Dame in 2016, as bad as they were, it beat a pretty decent Miami team that year. Right. I mean, I think it was a Miami team that won nine games, handled your business. And then you also lost to Navy. You know, and 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 you come out first half and you give every USC everything they can handle in a year where USC at that point in time was really good. And then USC kind of, you know, did what they did to pull away from it. But those are different things that that you look at and say, hey, listen, you've got to you've got to be able to respond mentally to what happened on Saturday. And that's why I say we're going to learn a lot about this football team. And that's what makes this game so important. Trevor. It's not even about Purdue. It's it's about Notre Dame. It's about what's their psyche, what's their mindset. Is it do they come out on Saturday with real confidence? Do they come on Saturday with fake confidence? Do they come out on Saturday flat? Those are the three options. And right now, I don't know that anyone can confidently say that they know what that's going to be. This game opens up the opportunity for somebody on the team to step up and be that guy. And I'm not necessarily talking about on the field, right? We've seen it. Notre Dame has, so far this year, have had guys that produce in the field. Obviously, number four in the backfield is a dude. And there's not a whole lot of convincing that needs to happen there. Bo Collins has shown flashes of, hey, I can be that guy in the passing game for you. Feed me the ball. What I'm talking about is... You have the opportunity. Somebody on that team has the opportunity to come in and bring the juice. That's what I think is lacked. And I think of guys like Nano Safamensa, who didn't start last year, right? 
he was a role player and a darn good role player at that. But he was the guy, if you remember that 2022 almost behind the scenes video when Notre Dame beat Clemson. And he was the guy in the locker room that was firing everybody up. It's halftime and he's yelling at everybody and he's, man, like we don't have a takeaway yet. We don't, we don't have a, a sack yet, a tackle for a loss yet. And there's something about this team that I feel like they don't have that right now. The, the players that were elected captains all at one point in time have came out and said, I'm a leader in my own way, or have came out and said, you know, I lead by example. I might not necessarily be the rah-rah guy, but, you know, I'm more of that one-on-one -on -one captain where I can sit down and, and, and give coaching and, and help develop people individually. Christian Gray talked about that um, with the mentorship that he received from Ben Morrison, but, what Notre Dame lacked last Saturday was that guy. That guy to say, yo, it's it's time to go. Doesn't matter who we're playing. I'm talking about the Nano Safamenses of the world, the Bo Bowers of the world, the guys that even the little stuff that on a kickoff would run down the field and they're getting the student section hyped up and, and getting everybody into it because none that, of that energy on Saturday. A hundred percent. And that kind flat. of uh, Trevor, I don't know if you guys could see this on TV, but up in the press box, there was never it like there was never a moment like, hey, we got this now. Even when they scored to go in the fourth quarter, there wasn't that. And and it's it, and people saying, like, oh, they need vocal leaders. Yeah, to a degree. I mean, you need vote, you need somebody to step up and say this, but the vocal leadership stops working if it's not backed up by action. Totally. What they need even more, again, vocal leadership needed. Somebody's got to step up and say, hey, this is not acceptable. But then you got to go out and practice and make sure and, and demand that everybody's going to a certain standard. And you've got to be the one to set that standard. You've got to be the one to go out there on Saturday and make that first big hit. I don't want to hear Howard Cross talking about this, that, and the other thing. I want to see Howard Cross go out there and make a big play on Saturday. I don't want to see Riley Mills as a leader get in front of the team and say, hey, we got to do this, this, and this, and this. No, I want to see you go out there and make a freaking play on Saturday. Like, I don't want to see Jack Kaiser, you know, be, be a, you know, hey, fellas, it's all good. We've got a lot to play for. No, I don't want to see. I want to see you go freaking st stick somebody, go hit somebody. I don't see Benjamin Morrison go pick a ball off and not get beat on a crucial crossing route late in the game. You know, like somebody's got to step up and say, hey, listen, I don't want to hear Riley Leonard talk about I got to practice. I don't give a crap about all that. I want to see you go make a play. That's what I want to see. And, you know, it's like defensively, You've got all these captains, and when the game was on the line, not one of them stepped up and made a play to to prevent them from going on a five minute game winning drive. Not once, not once, not one of them. And that's what we need to see on Saturday as well. Is again, it, it comes down to where's your leadership? Leadership will emerge in a game like this against Purdue. And it, it will have emerged starting really yesterday, hopefully, but definitely today when they put the pads on. And, I mean, that that's going to be a big key. The big part of their preparation this week, Trevor, is going to be, hey, they got to bring it. Because, again, what's at stake in this football game? What's at stake in this football game is your season to a degree and the, the tenure of Marcus Freeman to a degree. And sometimes I wonder, and, and and some people have 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 discussed it in the sh in the sh chat a little bit. And I was talking about this with a couple guys before the show, but I really wonder if sometimes Marcus Freeman maybe listens to too many people and doesn't have enough conviction about certain things on his own. I want to see him like get back saying like, look, okay, this is what I believe and we're going to do it. And then sink or swim because right now your career, your career at Notre Dame is essentially on the line this week. I mean, like, look, like, Trevor, I don't know how this team in year three recovers from a low, a road loss to Purdue to fall to one and two preseason number five team in the country. It's like getting a number five has been a horrible thing for Marcus Freeman. He's gotten a number five twice in his career and both times actually I don't count the bowl game. That's unfair because that wasn't his team. He wasn't the coach of that team. But the other two times, you were number five preseason going to Ohio State, and you lost two games in a row. You go into this weekend, and you're, five, you're number five in the country in the AP, and you lose. Okay? So, you, you like, he's, like he – what was frustrating to hear from Marcus Freeman is he's talking about after the game, he's talking about how we got to learn to handle success better. I said that on Tuesday of last week. How is that message not being hammered in your player's head last Tuesday? 
you know, and that's that's kind of frustrating. But at the end of the day, if they don't go out and win this game this weekend, and again, it's one of those – I I don't care if it's ugly or, or a blowout. I really don't. They they need to they need to win this game. The better they play, the better we'll all feel about it. But they've got to win this game because I honestly don't know how you recover from this. Number one, it's going to say, who else are you going to beat? Because if beating Northern Illinois and Purdue is really tough business, then who's not going to be tough business? You know, and and, and so that those that's why again I think this weekend is huge for them, Trevor. Is they've they've got to. There, there's a lot more at stake here than I think maybe they're they realize, you know, because they're probably looking at a real mac, micro level, sure. like you know, it's oh, it's just one game, you know, one play, one life, one game. What? Okay, that's all fine, but you got to have some awareness of what's outside of that. Like, you know, yes, you got to focus on that one play, but as a coach, I'm talking about, you've got to be more aware of some more bigger picture, broad things, and and that's why I think this Purdue game is is huge. Because this is a this is a it's not a make or break moment for Notre Dame because I don't think a win makes this team, but it can be a break moment, and that's what we need to see. It's it's a sink or float opportunity, to be honest with you, and that and that's the way that I look at it. Notre Dame needs to show themselves, needs to show us as as Irish nation, um. They, they need to show that they can handle the bright lights, right? And I'm not talking about the bright lights of college game day. I'm not talking about the bright lights of a top 20 showdown at night. I'm talking about when something needs to happen because something needs to happen this game. This isn't a, well, I guess we'll go out there and we'll see what happens. It, that's what I mean when the lights are on you. The spotlight is now on Notre Dame, and it's not the good kind. When you have other coaches referencing your team, talking about how, hey, look at Notre Dame versus Northern Illinois, nothing's guaranteed. That's the narrative of your team after you just beat Texas A&M in College Station at night? So I want to know how this team is going to handle what's at stake is how can they handle it when their back is against the wall and they're, you know, for lack of better analogies, they're a wounded animal. They're, I mean, you know, they're trying to find their way. They need to turn it around. And how they respond this week is going to be a big key indicator for me, whether it's a three point win or a 30 point win. How you respond is going to be everything. Because let's be real, much like how we talked about last week, Notre Dame is the more talented team. And that's not Purdue specific. You could say that about 90% of the teams on Notre Dame schedule. Just to be fair, that's why you went out and got Mike Denbrock. And that's why you went out and got Bo Collins and Chris Mitchell. And, and that sophomore class has another year under their belt, right? But you need to go out and show yourselves, I mean, one, that you can do this. Because as much as you know, you're media facing, and you can say all the right things, but you, we will see what that's like on Saturday, whether you say it or not. And I that I got to see it, you know, I I got to see that the team believes in what they are saying, and the coaches believe in what they are saying. And if that doesn't come to fruition, that's what's at stake. Is now you have to look at a program and say. All right, well, not only do the players not believe in themselves, do the coaches believe in the players they have? Do they believe in themselves? And I know it's so crazy to think about that, that, that the game that we're talking about is Purdue. But this is a situation that you're in right now, and, and you have to play with the cards that you're dealt. And it, we'll see what direction it goes in from here. you got to deal with the reality you have, not the reality you want. 100%. If you want a different reality, then you got to do something about it and create it. I mean, that, mm -hmm. that that's where they're at. Mm -hmm. So if they do it, if they are able to go out and get a win, then obviously that 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 builds some momentum. And then whether or not this is fixed is determined by how much they can consecutively string things together. Because if we're looking big picture at Marcus Freeman, we have definitely seen some very impressive stretches under him where they've won you know, certain amount of games in a row or had, had, you know, real, you know, good solid wins. But the reality is, is he's now in year three 
and you know won nine games his first year and 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 won um, ten games his second year, but he's never had more than five wins in a row. He had five wins in a row at during the 2022 season. So beat UNLV, Syracuse, Clemson, Navy, BC, and lost to USC. If you count the bowl game and then the start of 2023, they won five games in a row, beat South Carolina, Navy, Tennessee State, NC State, Central Michigan, and then went one and two the next three games. And then they won two, lost another one, won three at the end of the year, and then one here. So they had a four-game winning streak that just got snapped again. So, I mean, that that's your next, be- next benchmark is can you really go on a roll? But it has to start here. And I do believe that how they perform against Purdue will – have a say in then can they get rolling? Like if, if you just scrape by the next two weeks and, and, you know, kind of go through and just, okay, you won, but you know, you won ugly, you know, the next two games look a lot like Texas A&M result wise. You're not going to be in a great position when Louisville comes to town. And, and it's going to be much harder for you to go on a run. So at some point in time, they've got to get rolling. Is this the week or is this the week that sets up that role? That's something that we're going to find out. So I do think, and we talked a lot about, you know, it's it's really devastating if you lose, but but I do think winning is important, obviously, beyond just you're not losing, but from the standpoint of it does play a role in in your confidence like just winning ugly doesn't necessarily make you a confident football team coming out there and playing to your potential is what reignites that confidence that you had that swagger that was and it and again trevor like here's what's so frustrating about it it wasn't false swagger because false swagger does not present itself in the fourth quarter of a tough game it is gone by then false swagger goes away when that team takes the ball right down the field and gets a field goal and then takes another lead. And that's not what that that's not false swagger. False swagger dissipates real fast if yep. it's not real. How that was that team was that was real swagger and confidence, and it was gone on Saturday. So you've got to rebuild that. And the better you play, the faster that is, because you've got to make sure that that what comes back isn't a false sense of bravado or swagger. It's got to be real and genuine. And that's that's where I'm at with it. I, the weird thing is, is you could make the argument, and, and you'll have to hear me out here, but you could make the argument that the mantra the team had going into the Texas A&M game and the Northern Illinois, Il, Northern Illinois game was almost the same of that we are better than you. Texas A&M, you saw that swagger and the fire of no matter what you throw at us, we're the more prepared team. We're the more athletic team. We're the tougher team. And that's where that fourth quarter swagger comes in that you were talking about, right? Unfortunately, on the flip side of that coin, you turn in the next week and you get so into it of yourself that you're like, yeah, we're better than you. So we're just not going to practice. We're just not going to take this seriously because we know that you're better than you. You know, and, and that's what's weird. It's you could almost look at that and say, yeah, I think both weeks Notre Dame was very confident that they were better. But where that kind of dissipates is to your point when Texas A&M comes back and punches you in the mouth, you can say, you know, we're better than you. Um, this is nothing to us. Whereas Northern Illinois does that. And it's like, Oh crap. I thought we were better than you, you know? And, and that's, that that's the weird line that you kind of have to walk. I, Notre Dame needs to put themselves in a spot where they themselves and, you know, the media, the local media like us, like the Irish Breakdown crew, you know, other media outlets around the team. And and from a national perspective, they need to put themselves in a position where they look at that Northern Illinois game like it is an anomaly. And they need to position themselves to say, at the end of the year, ideally, because now if Notre Dame wants to make the playoffs, I firmly believe it has to be an 11-1 and type season. It's funny, we talked about before the Texas A&M game, we talked about how if you lose this game, the season's not over, but the margin for error is smaller. Now that you lost to Northern Illinois, I'd make the argument the margin for error is zero. There is no, well, maybe if you know they play USC tough at the end of the year. At, no, there is no, you run the table the rest of the year. Let's just call that a common ground. Mm-hmm. They need to get to the point where they themselves believe 
that they are so good that that Northern Illinois was a, we know exactly why we know why we lost that game. It is an anomaly. There is no question that Notre Dame is one of the best 12 teams in the country. And that's the position that they have to put themselves in starts with Purdue. And like we've been talking about, it starts with taking that step in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it like, like you're making a good point because I thought you were going to start talking about, you know, whether or not they will or won't or can or can't get into the playoff. And I was going to be like, pump the brakes, but you said it perfectly because of course, if, like I said, if, a, if Notre Dame runs the table, they're in the playoff. Now where they're seated is going to be up for debate. But at this point in time, like I, I don't care about that right now. But how you play this weekend is going to be something that can then set you up to then potentially go on that kind of run. Because as you mentioned, you're now in like like 10 and 2 might have been able to get you in, but not 10 and 2 with a home loss against Northern Illinois where they outplayed you for 60 minutes. Like you're going to have to be 11 and 1, barring some, there's just a bunch of four loss teams out there. Mm-hmm. But how, how you, to get there, you have to first come out and handle your business Saturday. And you know what I want to see on Saturday, Trevor? I'm going to be honest with you. And we'll, we'll, we'll get into specifics from a offense, defense. I'm just about as a team. I want to see this team really pissed. Mm-hmm. And if this team doesn't come out pissed, and, and I don't mean pissed in like they're taking late shots at Purdue or talking a lot of trash or – you know, that's not that that's emotional. I'm not talking about emotional. I'm talking about playing with a little bit of a chip on your shoulder because like, you know, I, I'm bar- you know, it's like when you when you we all played sports, right? And you go out, Trevor, I know you played baseball as well as I did. You don't have that game where you go 0 for three with a couple strikeouts and a pop out against some pitcher that sucks, and you're just like you're embarrassed with how you played. You come out that next game and man, you're you're locked in, you're kind of pissed because I want to show everyone that's not who I am. You come out that next game, go three for four with a couple doubles and a, you know, and make two great plays at shortstop. And, you know, what I mean, like, that's what I'm talking about. Come out pissed off. Like, that's not who we are. We embarrassed ourselves, you know, and, and, and we, we put on this Notre Dame uniform and we had Manti Teo there and we disappointed him. We disappointed our fans. You know, like oh, you know, oh, we heard the booze, and 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 it's going to be motive. Why does why does us being disappointed in how you played motivation for you not to play that way? Explain that to me, all American. I don't understand that. That's basically what Howard Cross said in after the game. Correct? I mean, you heard that right? Like, wait a minute. You getting embarrassed by Northern Illinois wasn't enough for you to have motivation to go play better. You needed to wait till you got booed by the fans who spent hundreds of dollars just on tickets, thousands of dollars on travel. They're the bad guy now. Not you just got embarrassed at Northern Illinois by Northern Illinois, right? But you need you need the fans booing you to be motivation. Here's a crazy thought, Trevor. Had you not embarrassed yourself against Northern Illinois, no one's booing you, right? So that just makes me think like there is something going on in that locker room where they're not really understanding what's at stake right now. And that's why I need to see something completely different on Saturday for me to like nothing that happens. They could win 70 to nothing and it doesn't change a whole lot for me. And matter of fact, that might actually piss me off a little bit more because I'm like, this is who you should have been. But it doesn't guarantee that they're not going to lay an egg the next week against Miami of Ohio. Right. But I need to see the right attitude on Saturday because if they have the right attitude, it tells me they took the right lessons from the loss. And saying that we're going to be motivated by the fans booing us for how we embarrassed this institution, this program, and all the people that came before us, we embarrassed them with this loss. We're, we're, that's the motivation we need to make sure that never happens again. Not that you don't get booed. Not that people don't say bad things about you on social media. Because, hey, guess what, guys? People are going to talk trash about you no matter what. Mm-hmm. This is why I don't care what people say about me. Because, like, no matter what stance I take, pro-BK, anti-BK, pro-Riley Leonard, anti-Riley Leonard, somebody's going to be pissed off at me. So I'm just going to be honest with you and give you my opinion and not really care what anybody thinks, right? Like, you need to focus on you as a team. And come out and play with that attitude. That's a big thing for me, Trevor, against Purdue is I don't want you to just go out talent Purdue. I want you to take out all your frustrations on Purdue because that you know what that's going to tell me? Trevor, it's going to tell me that this team does have some pride. 
that this team is pissed off about how they embarrass themselves. And I don't want to see them come out and say, well, see, maybe the fans will like us now. Like, get, I don't want to hear all that crap. You embarrassed yourself. Go out and play like you're embarrassed and you want to prove something that, no, that, no. Yeah, we, we look like crap on that Saturday. And, I, and I've used this example before. Ohio State. I talked about it last week. Before this game, I talked about Ohio State losing to Virginia Tech and getting embarrassed by Virginia Tech in that game. Lost by two touchdowns at Virginia Tech. And that Ohio State team kind of came out with a little bit of a 